Oh, hi. So you clicked on this video because you want to learn something related to dentistry. Well, you are on the right place. I am Dr. Hina, the voice and soul behind Dr. Teeth. And this is the platform where we make learning interesting and incredibly easy for you. So do leave a like and subscribe to my channel and I will recommend you to join channel membership to watch our premium videos. You can also visit our website for online classes, courses, and CQs. So let's get started. Hello everyone, Assalamu alaikum. Welcome back to Dr. Teeth. Today we are going to understand how do we decide the number of implants to be placed in an edentulous maxilla based on the arch form. Okay. Now, broadly we can classify the arch form as square, ovoid or tapering. But since we have an edentulous maxilla, how do we actually calculate? Can you just have a look of it and subjectively decide? Or is there a method to quantitatively calculate whether it is a square form, ovoid form or a tapering form? And yes, there is a method. So in this video, we will learn how to calculate and come to a conclusion whether it is a square, ovoid or tapering. And then how do you decide how many implants to be placed at what positions? Now it is very important here to understand that the arch form depends on the teeth arrangement or the arrangement of your final prosthesis and not the edentulous arch. So you need to either have the old set of denture that the patient is wearing or you need to make a new set of denture, check the aesthetics of the patient and then we will proceed on to calculate. We mark the incisive papilla, we mark the canine tips, then we draw a line that bisects the incisive papilla and the tip of the canine. Another line is drawn parallel to this line and along the facial surface of the incisor. Now this distance is measured. If this distance is less than 8 mm, we have a square arch form. Now in square arch form, the cantilever is less. So we will place two implant in the canine position. So for anterior six teeth, two implants are sufficient. Then two implants in the premolar region and two implants in the distal surface of the first molar region. So total six implants should be placed. Another scenario, let us suppose we have this arch form. Again, we'll do the same calculation. Incisive papilla, tip of canine, draw a line bisecting them, another parallel line and measure the distance. If the distance is eight to 12 mm, this is a ovoid arch form. Now in ovoid arch form, we need to obviously place implants in the canine region, but also one implant is needed in the central incisor region or it can be given in the lateral incisor region as well. Then rest is the same molar region and the premolar region and the distal of the first molar region. So total seven implants. Another case, incisive papilla, tip of canine, a line bisecting them. If the distance is more than 12 mm, then it is a tapering arch form. Now in this case, apart from the canine position, two additional implants may be needed in the incisor position because the cantilever here is quite high. The amount of force that the dentition will be subjected to will be quite high. So we need more number of implants. Then our usual position, premolar and the distal of the first molar. Now, if the forces are high or if the bone density is less, we may need to place two additional implants in the distal surface of the second molar region. So total, we have eight implants or if the force is very high, we can go up to 10 implants. So this is how we evaluate the arch form and know the number of implants that need to be placed in an edentulous maxilla. Similarly, we have certain set of rules for the mandibular arch and if you want me to cover that, let me know in the comment section below. Also, please give your feedback if you like this video. It really motivates me to create more videos of this kind. If you're new to this channel, consider subscribing, liking and sharing my work. It means a lot. Thanks for watching. Allah Hafiz.